Okay, so we've got rotational speed equals degrees per second. We've got 360 degrees in one rotation. The amount of degrees equals 360 degrees times five rotations equals 1800 degrees. So now we've got the degrees. Now we need to find the seconds. So we've got, we're starting with 30 minutes. We're gonna need to convert that so how many seconds are in a minute? Six, please. Two. Yeah, all right. 60, 60. Hmm. 60 seconds in one minute. 30 times 60 equals? 1,800. There it is, 1,800 seconds. So we can go back and we can say, Rotational speed equals 1,800 degrees over 1,800 seconds equals one degree per second. All right. There's a reason I gave you those numbers. I wanted it to work out evenly. So, so if a planet moved fast enough to be able to move uh, five, to be able to rotate five times in every half hour or 10 times in an hour, right? Then it would be able to move one degree per second. That, that would be obviously extremely fast. Extremely flat, fast for a planet, but not necessarily extremely fast for a ball. In fact, that would be really slow for a ball, right? That would be one time every six minutes, one rotation every six minutes. That would take forever, all right? But for a planet, that's fast. So let's move on and I have to get rid of that. Oh my gosh. There we go. Um, I'm gonna post the Slack invite one more time and not just to Victor, but to everybody. Sorry about that, Victor. Um, Please make sure that you're on Slack. It will enable us to have communications outside of class time um, and outside of uh, lessons. And we'll be able to share uh, other things other than just doggy videos. Dwight and Dahlia, I like it. Let's bring your own pet day. Um, <laughs> so please make sure that you are logging on to Slack and you are allowing us to have these conversations. I will invite you to another channel. It'll be, hey, Angelina is participating in Bring Your Own Pet Day too. Um, and so I'll make a private physics channel. You'll all be invited to it. We'll be able to talk physics. I can share documents with you. And if necessary, we can have uh, Zoom sessions that spring up at other times right out of that channel. Um, make sure that you submit the notes for the lecture yesterday. If you missed the lecture yesterday, uh, it is recorded. I put it on the YouTube, on the uh, Google Classroom stream. It's a YouTube video on the Google Classroom stream. You need the link. You can't just go to my channel. Uh, I did that because I don't want it to be public. So, um, uh, Aisha, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Uh-huh. If I wasn't there for the board meeting, how am I supposed to do it? Great question. So um, instead of putting together a presentation for the board meeting, um, what you can do is simply go over what your conclusions are from the lab and reflect on if you were going to do that, if you were actually going to do that experiment, what might you do differently than what I did in order to get better data? Okay. Okay. So. We did the quiz yesterday, number 91. Um, I'm treating that mostly as an activity sheet. So we're gonna review some parts of it. I don't wanna review the whole thing because I know some of you haven't had the opportunity to do it yet. And then we are going to do this quote unquote lab for number 93 using a simulation. So let's head out to the quiz.
and there is one calculation here. Let's make sure we go over that calculation and then uh, if you are confused about any of these particular questions, we can go over two or three of them. But again, I don't want to go over the whole thing. I want folks to have an opportunity to get that in. So, um, a 45 kilogram boy uh, sits on a horse on a carousel five meters from the center of a circle. He makes a revolution every eight seconds. Calculate his speed. Uh, do you have to use all the information that you were given here? I hope not, that's what I did. What information do you not need? The mass? Right. We're not calculating force. So because we're not calculating force, and we will calculate centripetal force, so you'll see a question like this again. But this time we're not calculating force, and so we don't need that. All we need is the radius, and we need the time, right? Because average speed equals 2 times pi times radius all over time. Okay, so we have two significant figures in the distance and the time. What is going to be the value of pi that I'm going to use if I've only got two significant figures? Am I going to use this value of pi? Excellent, Aisha. Thank you, Julio. Two significant figures. I'm just going to use 3.1. What is the radius of, of this carousel? Of this ride? What's the radius? 5.0 watts. There we go, meters. Good, good, good. And then we're going to take all that and divide it by the time. And this boy makes a revolution every how many seconds? Thank you every 8.0 seconds. So now we can do the math. 2 times 3.1 times 5. Right. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 3.1 is 31. So that should be 31 meters. And we're going to divide that by 8.0 seconds. With one, with two significant figures, what do we get? Three point eight seven. Three point eight seven. So with uh, two significant figures, thank you, Christian. What does that round off to? Three point nine. Three point nine. Beautiful. All right, 3.9 meters per second is going to be his speed. All right, other questions that you wanted to go over? Like I said, I'll go over two or three of them. Things you are confused about. Oh, I'm not going to go over number four, though. That is one that I definitely want to make sure I get everyone's answers on. If not, we'll go straight to the lab, and we can talk about the quiz some other time. Question number three, I guess. OK. So. Empty car tire or the same tire mounted on a rim. Um, did we do an experiment kind of like this?
Don't tell me no. So here's our tire, empty tire, right? Here's our, here's our tire mounted on a rim. Okay, one has more mass, right, in the middle. So if I roll these two down, and by the way, this is my, uh, this is the socks, right? Remember that? So if I roll these two down, which one is going to reach the bottom of the hill sooner? I don't have an assistant today. So, all right, I know my video is small, but can you see it? Yeah. Okay, which one? I, I can't see the chat, so you're going to have to just unmute yourself. Empty or full? This is non sloshing. The one without sloshing will go faster. Okay, the empty one. So you're saying the empty one or you're saying the full one? Uh, empty one. Okay, so the empty car tire versus the tire mounted on a rim. All right, let's find out. This is tricky. All right, someone count me down. Go. All right, that was trial one. Which one went down faster? Did you see it? Trial two, which one went down faster? Did you see it? The one on the right. Yeah, that doesn't help. Empty or full? Okay, so why would the empty one be making it down our little hill faster? Less inertia to start off with, right? So I want you to think about there's less inertia to start off with, all right? Over a longer period of time, which one do you think would end up going faster? This is not an easy question.
So I want to flip the question back on you guys and have you consider these various answers based on the fact that that was a that's that's only one meter. All right, the empty one definitely made it down one meter faster because there was less inertia to start off with. So it was easier for gravity to overcome that initial inertia. But that car tire mounted on a rim is going to have more inertia over the long term. And so there's so I want you to carefully consider each of these answers and figure out which one best describes which one would reach the bottom of the hill sooner. All right. Okay, so I am going to leave this for later. I don't see anyone else asking questions about these quiz questions. Um, we, can, we will come back to it later, all right? But what I wanna do is head out to number 93. So I think you'll have fun with this. Um, oh, haha, -ha. 11.30 p.m. That is definitely not 11.30 a.m. Okay, refresh Google Classroom and you should see number 93 called orbital motion. Under 93, you will see, you will see several links. One of them is to a Word document if for whatever reason you can't, it doesn't pop up for you, but it should pop up like, like this. Um, you may be able to edit it. I can actually convert this because I don't know that I converted it to a Google Doc, so. Um, but you can either convert it or have a, a separate document with your responses. I'm gonna walk you through what you're gonna do. So have that document up, please. You're gonna go through both of these, both of these simulations the model simulation and the to scale uh, simulation. The model simulation shows our Earth as being far, far, far closer to the sun. So I'll wait to make sure that everyone's on the simulation. So what I want you to start off doing is make sure that these two are selected and all four are checked. If you are not on the simulation right now, let me know so that I can slow down. Once you have all four checked, you can click play. And you will see several things happening. OK, 
Can you identify what the red arrow is? What does the red arrow represent? Velocity vector. The velocity vector. And you notice how that is moving tangent to the orbit, tangent to the circle that is being created here. So the what is the blue arrow that's pointing from Earth? The acceleration. Excellent, the acceleration vector. And what is that acceleration due to? Is there a giant string that is attached from the sun to Earth? Change in direction. But what is that acceleration due to? Gravity. Gravity. Now, something fantastic about gravity, and I really like this part of physics. What the heck? Why does the sun have one of these? Because it's pulling. The sun is experiencing an equal amount of gravitational force as the earth is. The earth pulls on the sun, the sun pulls on the earth. Now for the sun, it's not moving all that much. It's moving a tiny, tiny, tiny amount due to Earth's gravity. But the Earth is moving a whole lot due to the sun's gravity because of the difference in mass. So you will see in here that the sun actually does move, all right, based on the movements of Earth. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is section A, right, clicking play and describing what you see. So I do want you to, on some sort of Google Doc or your notes, whatever you want, you can take a picture of your notes. I want you to describe what you see, all right? This, this can be just, just your words. And then what we're going to do for part B is, and I'm blocking the button here, uh, is we're going to hit refresh, all right? Recheck the boxes. And then we're going to change the planet's mass. You can decrease the planet's mass. You can increase the planet's mass. All right, you can go crazy with it. Bump it up to double what the what Earth's mass is. Um, see what happens to the orbit. You're going to do the same. You'll reset everything. Change the sun's mass, the star mass, and then reset everything. You don't actually have to reset everything as long as you're making sure that you go back to normal. Uh, and then, you know, change both the star and the planet's mass. See what crazy things you can have happen. All right. Um, then you're going to answer E, F, and G based on what you did. Um, see if you can, for part G, See if you can play with the simulator until you can answer yes to both E and F. Um, and you can, it's kind of fun to lose the earth. And then I want you to add a moon, all right? So once you get down to H, you're gonna add a moon. Talk about what happened to the planet's orbit. Um, I just wanna take a quick look with you at what this looks like when you add the moon. So that is a pretty accurate simulation of the Earth-Moon system as it orbits around the sun. Something interesting to watch is if we keep track of the path, watch what happens to the path. Suddenly it doesn't look like a circle anymore. And so the moon is subject to both the gravity of the earth and the sun, which has a bigger impact on the orbit of the moon, the gravity of the earth or the gravity of the sun.
your hint is, is the moon rotating around the sun or is the moon rotating around the earth? I mean, I could watch this all day, but. Is the moon rotating around the earth or the sun? Thank you, Aisha. Yeah. So Earth's gravity is stronger than the sun's gravity because gravity depends not only on mass, but distance. Okay, so gravity as a force is heavily dependent on distance. That's why the moon is captured by Earth and not by the sun because it's much closer to the Earth. So Go through the simulation. Um, when you are done, let me know when, you're, uh, when you get done with uh, this part of the simulation. So uh, the model as opposed to the two scale. When you get to two scale, let me know uh, so that we can touch base and see where you are. All right, have fun playing with the simulation. Try to lose the earth. Uh, try to get the earth to crash into the sun if you can. That's always fun. <laughs>